Oh yeah, Kalu, get him. Yes, you do, for so many reasons. More reasons than you probably are thinking about right now. I like it. I love it. With a few reservations. And I hope it leads to the, the closure that Glue needs about his ability to act. Hunter x Hunter, episode 94, Friend X and X Journey. Day one. Or two. Terrified. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like it is some kind of hypnosis, some kind of mind control, but it doesn't need to be for it to be relatable. <laughs> well, they, they drew in the little chips in his teeth. This conflict will make it all the sweeter when he actually figures it out, which he will. I know not because it's a show, but because of the faith I have in Kalua. And because I believe if you want something this badly for this long, and you experience the pain enough times of watching yourself do the thing you hate to see yourself doing, you eventually figure it out. Like I was saying, this seems like control from his brother. In real life, I think one of the most common and important arcs in growing up, let's call it, is experiencing that first spark, sort of this big bang of consciousness where you realize things can be questioned, and that you are the ultimate arbiter of what you do with your thoughts and feelings. And I think what that process often looks like in practice is one by one locating the assumptions that were really useful to you at one point because they kept you safe and alive and functioning in your world in which you developed and grew up and reevaluating them with your new capacity for nuance and all the new information you've had from experience. And yeah, often those things are from people in one's young environment, strange messages or incentives people got from their parents or family, which not to trivialize it, it's really difficult and it goes in incredibly deep, but that maybe is less frequent or perhaps uh, a secondary result of the childhood conceptions and schematics that one created for themselves through their limited perception that now serve as obstacles that are no longer keeping you safe but are doing the opposite. Very difficult to do this in real time though, like in an actual dangerous event. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> going having a wonderful date or maybe it's Palm having the wonderful date. Palm's like, at first I just wanted your body, but now I want so much more. She's not the one. Oh. <laughs> okay. Bro. Was that comment about breeding a hint going out here setting the mood maybe these videos are gonna get me in trouble best date i ever had in my entire life which i probably mentioned a few times by now but me and my now ex-girlfriend in the middle of the night swam to an island we had heard rumors about not even being fully confident it was out there in the water very nearly drowning but arriving to a private island with a beautiful beach and this field of exotic flowers and staying there till sunrise <laughs> meanwhile man i have so many mixed feelings about this now, shut up Take your time, whenever you're ready. I want to believe that Bisky's out there watching somewhere, but... Or will be, one day. And that day is now? Gon just overkilled this date. He did max damage to a level 1 enemy. Would break damage limit. Maybe she is the one. <laughs> oh. Oh. And that just makes him so much more attractive. He's got a lot going on. He has goals and priorities. He's something you could never, never grab. There's so much happening right now, so much going on. One of these things is of more dire importance than the other. <laughs> if it is some kind of end control, how do you- how exactly do you break it? I mean, the answer is just sheer power of will. Oh, 
それとも。He's not even relevant. Like, I don't know. Clue's not even seeing him. c l u e s enemy at this point is his inner demons, and this person's just a, a figurehead. But maybe the breakdown is good, though. I very potently feel Kulu's frustration. And now we've seen it in both characters in the span of just a few episodes. It's just the, the absolute powerlessness and frustration of facing your own inadequacy and weakness without、uh, having any clear course in how to proceed and not really having any confidence that you can affect things to your benefit. Mixed with the knowledge that if you had done more before, you could have avoided this. And there's nothing you can do to go back and change that. I hesitate to talk about the memory that this brings up for me because it's bizarre. And very personal and a bit embarrassing, but I think it's fine because there's no way to connect anything to her. The ex girlfriend I mentioned in the island story, unbeknownst to me at first, was let's say an escort. And for me, that was sort of an untenable situation. So once our relationship reached a certain level of depth, she made the decision to stop doing that sort of work, which solved that problem but created a lot of new tensions. For the record, I also want to make it clear I have a lot of sympathy for her. I'm not judging the way this went down at all. But the challenge was the reason she was in that kind of work is because whether or not it was true, she, having no educational background, no other work experience, was convinced that it was the Only pathway for her. And furthermore, there's a time limit on how long you can do that work. The idea with that kind of work generally is you work really hard, save a lot of money in your youth, hopefully meeting you know, a sponsor or something more, more serious, and save enough money to live off of or get married to someone who can support you while you're still young. So dating me for her created a very dangerous trade off where she was making herself very vulnerable. To the ups and downs of our relationship. Hypothetically, let's say if we dated for five years and broke up, she would be in a terrible situation, having saved nothing, and her game plan much less viable. So there was always that pull. And this created tension, and that tension created fights, and those fights, I think subconsciously, gave her an out to temporarily break up and go back to that line of work. And what exacerbated this was that there's a tremendous amount of money in it, money that I could not at all compete with at the time. So, time and time again, at least from the way I conceptualized it at that point, I watched her get pulled out away from me by money, by really seedy people, which led to these feelings of powerlessness. And self loathing.、Uh, like, if only I had amassed that sort of wealth by now, I could have just solved this problem. Of course, it's probably obvious listening to this, as it has become to me over time, that that is not. The right takeaway. Yes, there are tools you can work on to improve your status in the world and the effect that you can have on things that you want. It was not my fault, let's say. There was no reason to hate myself for not having been fully prepared for that situation in advance before I knew of the situation. Winning was not having enough money to incentivize our actions to get what I wanted out of it. Money was just a very convenient scapegoat. To simplify the problem to where I felt like I might have had some control to avoid looking at other painful truths and to give myself at least some comfort, false comfort, from telling myself the problem was as simple as focusing on a single point of leverage. For Gon, yes, he can become stronger. That is the actionable thing he can do. No, it is not his fault that Kite succumbed to the ants. Kalua has identified running as the scapegoat. His personal demons and baggage from his childhood are the culprit. It's a way of channeling the problem into something very specific and therefore easily understood and avoiding the much more complex real issue, which are his personal demons. And to that effect, I think that both Gon and Kalua can benefit from a breakdown because it's like letting go finally of that figurehead. Like the it's not your fault moment in Goodwill Hunting, where in your pain you allow yourself a little bit of forgiveness for not being perfect in the way you need to be right now. Hopefully, clearing some emotional space and freedom for a second to get your bearings and figure out what it is you need to do that would be most helpful for you right now. I don't know if he realizes that the tide is turning right now. What's so beautifully painful about this? Well, there's multiple levels. The love that Kalua has for Gon is beautiful. Gon has been a really great friend in a lot of key ways, though there are some questionable moments for sure, like the dodgeball game. But to the best of his ability, Gon has been a wonderful friend. But watching this, I can't help but feel like it's it's not, it's hard to explain. It's not Kalua's love for Gon, or it's not Gon's beauty. That's shining here. It's Kalua's. The love that Kalua has for Gon is the warm, beautiful kid that he is. He can't see that himself, but I think we can see it. And Gon is a mirror for that. The depth of this kind of love and commitment to someone that we're seeing, we're seeing in Kalua. <laughs> He just ripped something out, pulled something very symbolic out of his brain. Uh oh. <laughs> This is great. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was very directly. I mean, it works, but like I said, it needn't be. It's, it's symbolic of something very real. Yeah, yeah. Manipulator. That's his thing. He also loves needles, it all fits. I bet. Yeah, I mean, it feels so real, even though, you know, there are no Nan pins. 
<laughs> this kid's been awake for five seconds already sending messages to a whole species. That's cool. Good. That was easy. Show it to him. Show uh, I wanted to show him his own body. <laughs> What is wrong with me? Good. Amazing on so many levels. I think this kind of anxiety and rumination is really good. It's really powerful if it leads to some action, you know, like never let your anxiety go to waste. If it's not, if it, you're just going in circles again and again, and you're wasting all of your, your mental energy reserves, going in circles, thinking and rethinking the same pattern for weeks or months or years or whatever, it's time to either do something or let it go. Though caveat to that, sometimes it does need to reach a fever pitch for that action to take place. But nevertheless, the key is the action. I also think that maybe one of the biggest secrets to a fulfilling inner framework or just life as a whole is something as simple as don't create any unnecessary obstacles for yourself. There are already enough of them built in. You don't need to make more. And it's really tricky because a lot of the time the obstacles, although they feel terrible, are things we have constructed for ourselves to bring us comfort, though they're definitely false friends. Like I can see what I could do. I can see my potential. It's scary to think what it would take to accept that challenge. So instead, look at this impossible thing that'll never happen because X, Y, Z. My destiny, this curse, this trait that is just a intrinsic part of me. I'm a failure people hate me I always run whatever whatever kind of identity it is this challenge for Klua was as much for Gon as me wanting a lot of money was to rescue my girlfriend meaning it is about those things in some way but that's not where the battle's being fought for the record the more I think about this stuff the more I, I recognize it in everyday conversation these kinds of identities are everywhere all the time they're extremely pervasive it's also really funny thinking about Klua's arc and trajectory you know he went from this terrifying boy monster to this sweet innocent creature I wanted to protect to this Terrible boy, boy monster, fully unleashed, but you know, improved. Um, <laughs> if this bush is a rocket, <laughs> what are we doing? This is Palm's date? Oh, she did not take that rejection well. How dare you be awesome. Go on, you, if you need help, blink twice. You should see the other guy. The other guy almost saw the other guy. Oh, what the hell? Just what? Okay. Oh, that looked very convincing. Yeah, I was, well... Yeah, it looked like it went right in his head. Time to leave, yeah. Love me or die. <laughs> Maybe I am like Pam. <laughs> Pam. I mean, I, you know, we've all been there, right? Right? At least we know the feeling. I don't know if she can be stopped. Wow, maybe that is maybe that's Gon's death by a jealous lover. I could see it. For all his Nen battles too. The irony. Kinda like how the biggest threat to Goku has always been Chi-Chi. <laughs> Why did she have all this voodoo stuff? Where is she storing it? Hmm. Okay. Okay. This is concerning because there is Nen. Oh, they can't even run. Well, they can run, but they can't hide. Damn, the jealous lover palm arc. The enemy I never saw coming. Speaking of, uh, <laughs> speaking of things you hold up as the problem. <laughs> then why are you wearing this knife necklace? How do these guys travel so fast? There's like in and out of the NGL every day. Knuckle being the people pleaser that he is, not fully preparing them at all for the monstrosity Kite has become. Yep, part broken until you meet the next person. Just like me for real. I knew it. I will never love again as long as I stay inside and don't go out. Dear Diary, today Nav-sama 
complimented my blood. Right? <laughs> cooking? <laughs> Would you accept cooking as an explanation? Go freaks. <laughs> Damn, she's 22. Stress has not been kind to her. Dodged a bullet there, though, probably. Would have been fun, though. Would have been a wild ride. That's cool to see them being kids. Metal Oompa Loompa? They've been doing a lot. Uh, they've been doing a lot. Good to see them relaxing. And, you know, doing what normal 12 year olds do and hitting the gym. You gotta take the pin out of your head. Yeah, that makes sense. It's not like there's anything else important going on that deserves our attention. What's that? Ant? Apocalypse? No, no. <laughs> Stalking children. You know what? Maybe humanity deserves to die. <laughs> At what point does this become an emergency? The ants. We're destroying everything. Good. Knuckles got this. You got this, Knuckle. Someone's doing something. Leave it to Knuckle. Man of action. I'm gonna destroy you like I destroyed that principal's cresta. He better win. Teachers and students have paired up. <laughs> the cheetah's also not a great match for Knuckle, it feels like, given his power. Yeah, I mean, he's got bullet speed. Wow, that was a packed episode. Lewis breakdown was really moving. I'm really happy to see. And also a, a bit terrified to see. Some closure on that for him. But I think way more emotionally impactful this episode. Gon's love life. Going through all of the critical stages of a relationship. First date, falling in love, stalking in a single day. 